Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. And uh, tonight, I think we have another epic and packed show. Uh, tonight, we have Bearded Gear with us. We will have the Knife Whisperer. We will have Dave the Old Sword Everett. Uh, we'll have Alex Tissot and many, many more. Uh, but there's a lot to talk about tonight. Um, I've been seeing a lot of videos uh, that have been best ofs. Uh, the year so far. You, you, you get that kind of halfway through the year. And so we're going to talk about some of that, our best uh, purchases and best releases uh, of 2020. But before we get started with any of that stuff, I would be remiss if I didn't say and bring you the news uh, that Blade Show has been canceled. So the um, August 7th through 9th alternative dates for Blade Show have been, uh, have been canceled. And we all were kind of uh, thinking it would go that way. Uh, but they wrote a very uh, level-headed and contrite letter um, saying that, you know, it was basically out of their control. And they do everything they can for their exhibitors and the, uh, the visitors of Blade Show uh, to make it a good experience. And there was just no way to make this a good experience this year. And we all know that... Uh, uh, Atlanta is, is, you know, it, it, it's got some other issues to deal with right now. So probably blade show, uh, and with the, the pandemic and, and people gathered together, it's, it's hard to stay six feet away when you're excited about looking at someone's knives and, and that kind of thing. So next year, 2021, June 4th and 6th. Now they do stress on the website that, uh, everyone who's a ticket holder, everyone who's an exhibitor, everyone, uh, who's involved in that show in some way or other, uh, should look at their emails or, you know, keep their eye on their email because uh, how to proceed from here will be coming. I'm not sure what those details are at all, but Blade Show is canceled. Blade Show 2020 is canceled. Bummer, but to be expected. Dirk, lovely to have you, sir. I have a, uh, I will be showing in a, in a few moments, ah, Therapeutic Edge, nice to see you, sir. And uh, I will have a, a challenge to your uh, impractical knife uh, that you showed the other day, most impractical knife when you were tagged by, uh, by the Blade Whisperer. Chad, good to see you, sir. Bony Blades. I, I always like looking at that uh, ZT there. Caleb, how you doing? You're in the running tonight, sir. You are one of seven. Women carry knives. Love to see you. I got the Pete right here. Therapeutic Edge, how you doing? Always, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Kane, welcome. And uh, I will cheers you. Cheers, since you put those up. Amateur Knives. Hello, lovely to have you. All right. Johnny Juke, good to see you. And, and lovely to uh, lovely to know you're, you're watching. Spirited Blades, Ryan, how you doing? I've been digging, man, that, that picture you put up today of some of your favorite knives uh, of recent, uh, of your recent purchase were just amazing. Amazing. I love, I'm a big fan of your most recent, uh, well, I don't know if it's your most recent, you got them coming and going so quickly. Uh, but the, uh, the green handled one, and now the name is escaping me with that, but with that gorgeous, gorgeous blade that looks like a dinosaur steel, steel oval. First time tuning in. It's good to have you. Good to have you, sir. We're going to be talking about presumably, sir, we're going to be uh, talking about a lot of stuff, but I don't know if you caught this. Blade Show 2020 is canceled. James, good to have you here, sir. In the words of the immortal Bill Daly, hi, Bob. <laughs> Mark Herrera, good evening. Good evening. Good to have you. Peace out. Edwin, Edwin, great to see you. Look at what I just got by a very generous uh, listener. We'll, we'll be talking about that. That is a super, and it is actually probably the sharpest, uh, sharpest thing I've held in a while. LA Knife Life. <laughs> yeah, all right, cool. Skywarp, good to see you, sir. As always, good to see you. Uh, <laughs> so we will not be telling any bosses of any uh, knife hangouts. I would like to bring on uh, one of my new favorite channels, um, Bearded Gear. Jim, will you bring in Bearded Gear? He's uh, waiting in the green room. How you doing, sir? Well, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. So um, tell me a little bit about, well, before you start talking about your channel, I need to know what you're carrying today. This is a pocket check. Sure. Um, I'm carrying the Para 3 today, but it's because I just did something new to my Para 3. This has Cerberus Knives Strider Co. scales, which I just decided to give a shot. So it's basically kind of like a Strider PT in shape, but it is a Para 3. So 
just an interesting, <laughs> a, a new experience for me with a pair of three. And I've had quite a few pair of threes and several different sets of scales. These are, these are new. Now this might be a controversial thing to say, but I think that's my very favorite. Uh, oh, thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. He was a great guy to talk to Levon. Uh, that is my very favorite pair of three I've ever seen. I, I'm not a great, great fan of it. And that is really looks cool. It's and wild, I, right? Yeah, it is. And today you posted a video, uh, kind of a POV video of you walking and flipping it. Yeah, <laughs> that was some pretty cool stuff. How did you how did you learn to do that? Um, so I that's just kind of naturally the way I've always turned knives around in my hand, like to go to reverse grip. That's the okay. way I do it. I think it stems from just being a fidgeter in general. I played drums a little bit, so I ah. did that with drumsticks. And right, to me, right. it just that's the way my brain turns a knife around. So my hand follows suit. It, it looked so cool. And, and when I first um, saw it, I was looking at your feet because, you know, you're walking and I'm like, oh, man, you're wearing flip flops. And I'm like, oh, I think he knows what he's doing, actually. <laughs> I do that just because the people always lose it when I'm in bare feet or flip flops and I'm flipping over concrete <laughs> and I'll do it with any knife I own. I'm not a, not afraid of it. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, our, our favorite knives of 2020 best uh, uh, either best releases or best purchases. For me, it's going to be mostly uh, best purchases. Okay. Uh, in a couple of a uh, couple of places, it's uh, it's different. Uh, also, we're going to be uh, announcing our my Patreon uh, monthly knife giveaway. Killer. And uh, and then we're going to talk and we're going to ah we have Dave Everett and we have Alex Tissot. Lovely to have you guys. And my brother Victor. <laughs> hey, Bob. And, All okay. your family. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Before we get to all of these things, since, since Vic dropped in, I have to answer a, a video tag that, that's been going around recently. And actually it was by the knife whisperer who um, will most likely be joining us. However, he does get up at 3 AM, which is insane. Uh, so he might not, but he put out a video uh, that was, what is your most impractical knife? And, uh, Man, I, I saw a couple of really, really good ones. And Dirk, w Dirk Warning took the cake. His was like a, uh, a beautiful, uh, help me with the name. I, I can never remember. The Peacemaker. The Peacemaker by the British. Phil family. Harvey. Phil Harvey. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I always forget that. And uh, it is an intimidating, huge slab. And, uh, and so here is my answer. And Vic, my brother, uh, made this for me at my request. And actually, it started as something much smaller. But let's see. So here, I'm going to back up a little bit. Maybe, maybe go wide, Jim. Okay. So this Holy crap. is the most <laughs> impractical blade here. And, and really, it is a blade because this is an SKS bayonet. And My God, uh, it's it's <laughs> attached to a beautifully braided leather handle. It's got shearling wool in there, and uh, so it's like a punch dagger. And then it's got it's got a you know a nice cuff to secure your hand, and two belts, and uh, some spikes. And, and so this is uh, so I asked my brother a rivet who makes beautiful leather work. He's done some gorgeous sheaths for me. Uh, I asked him to make me a leather cuff and it ended up turning into a Conan the Barbarian <laughs> pit fighting gauntlet. And I asked for it left-handed so that I could carry any one of these swords <laughs> in the other hand, just in case, you know, this was in my conspiracy theory days. I, I thought the world was about to end. I thought I might need this. So at the time it was quite practical, but now this is so my... now. So now it is the most impractical knife you yeah. have. Wow. Now it is my most impractical. Huh. Knife. Amazing. <laughs> you got to get Vic on more often. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, so there you go. Too bad the Knife Whisperer is not here to see me tag up on his video. Uh, so, uh, guys, you all heard about Blade Show 2020. Yes. Yeah. No yep. surprise. No surprise. Victor, uh, the, the big the big industry show has just been canceled because yeah. it's it, in Atlanta. And it makes sense. Pandemic. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's uh, it's pretty, pretty lame because this was going to be the year Jim and I actually decided to go. And, uh, and so it's me not too. Happened. Yeah. First time ever. It was supposed to be my first blade show. Yeah. I was, I was hoping to get to Portland this year. Show. My first, but... uh, I, wait, I'm sorry. What was that bearded blade? Uh, you, oh. you, <laughs> you've got the biggest show on the road. 
Uh, oh, thank you, thank you. Well, you know what? We'll do a, we'll do another knife <laughs> knife town hall. We can say socially distanced. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. We should wear blades. <laughs> Bearded gear. Hello. What were you saying? Oh, I was just saying I was I was finally going to make it this year to Portland and that one got canceled. So I was already I've been bummed <laughs> since that was the one I was going to go to. So yeah. I understand everyone's frustration now that the actual <laughs> Blade show is also canceled. Well, so how long, how long have you been uh, having how long have you had your channel Bearded Gear? How long have you been doing these gear reviews? Ooh, less than four months, just a, just a handful of months so far. OK, so what what drove you to do it? What what? Uh, Obviously, you're a gear lover. Why did why did you decide to make a YouTube channel? Yeah, I had been meaning to start a YouTube for the last couple of years because I've been buying gear like crazy and using it. And uh, I've naturally been a consumer of YouTube, uh, as I'm pretty sure most people are in 2020. So it, it was just kind of a natural, as soon as I got furloughed from my job and had all of this free time, that was the answer was something to keep me productive. And I've been just nonstop since I've I haven't missed a day of posting and I'm well over 200 videos. I've had a lot of days where I'm three or four videos up. So, so what, what would you say is your um, main objective with it or what, what's your perspective? What do you, what do you like? Obviously you showed that, that very beautifully modified pair of three uh, with the, with the, um, what'd you call it? The Strider Strider. Yeah. He calls them Strider co three scales. Strider. <laughs> right. I mean, um, I don't know if there's going to, how long that's going to last before Strider gets mad at him. But <laughs> uh, so uh, Ryan says, Bob, in lieu of Blade Show, you should invite a few favorite makers and host Knife Junkie Town Hall, Knife Show Edition. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a good idea with the lotto. Uh, Jim, Jim was bringing up the same thing. This is an opportunity uh, for us to do another town hall, but also have it be a marketplace. And, and, uh, you know, the, the makers and designers that can come on, uh, that come on can show off a couple of knives and sell them right there. Uh, something kind of similar happened at the last town hall. Edwin, uh, connected with Greg Lightfoot and had a, a beautiful, uh, alien made. It's one of his, uh, it, it's his knife that looks like a straight razor, recurved straight razor, quite badass. That's uh, a great idea though, because people are, you know, there's going to be a vacuum and nature of horror is a vacuum. So fill it. Or is a vacuum, indeed, brother. <laughs> no, no, but it's true. And you know what? At first, when Jim brought it up, he's like, "Okay, let's do it on that weekend." And I was like, "Hmm, but what if it's happening?" And then, uh, and then we're 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 sidelining it. Not not that this show would sideline Blade Show. I am certainly not implying that. Uh, but but I felt like since I had already talked to uh, the the person who who runs the show. Uh, that it might be a little, I don't know, cheap. But now that it's not happening, hey, Slicey, rumors of the oh, my death are premature. Slicey, <laughs> we don't even know that was him who typed that. To be fair, that is. True. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is true. <laughs> I told Slicey he needs to do one of those, uh, like, days with COVID nineteen, like what it feels like kind of videos, because those seem to be getting a lot of views on YouTube right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I think everyone thought it was drawing to an end and and I'm like, oh, man, these commercials, you know, if you if you turn on the television and, and flip around on uh, commercial TV, man, you'll see commercials that are like, God, these seem so out of date. Like, uh, uh, but then they're not again, which kind of sucks. Uh, what was yeah. that last spirited uh, spirited uh, blade comment? Yes, 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 I think so. I think so. Uh, we are it, it. Something is in the works. Something is indeed in the works. And uh, I would love everyone here to be a part of it. First, we have a cold steel Tylite, and I mean, not Tylite, SR1 light. Now, I've had this in my hot little hands for about a week, and I haven't opened it because I wanted to show that it was sealed when I sent it to you. Um, who, whoever went, <laughs> we got seven people, but now, I, now I feel like I should open it up and inspect it just to make, just sure. To make sure it's okay. Oh, thank you. See, we yeah. understand one another. So I'm going to, and okay. So check this out. I got a, another knife in the mail yesterday. Yesterday was a two knife, uh, like two knife day. And they were both given to me by very generous people. And this by, uh, the knife whisperer who Ooh. should be with us. Where are you, sir? And I'm, I heard you say you, you don't do unboxings, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> with some excitement. Uh, or like, with some, like, well, we'll get to that in a minute. The Harsey, man, I had to unbox it. 
This is more of an inspection. This is an inspection. Thank you, Vic. You're welcome. Yes, indeed. Oh, See, man. I like the way your brother thinks he's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is... Mm. They put the oh, right knife in the box. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they did. And, and look, it's... Or yeah. maybe they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe this is a deep fake. Oh, that is sweet. <laughs> this is really, really cool. So that is cool. sweet, Bob. How yeah. how how hefty is it? It looks like it's got stout. some heft to it. It is stout as hell. Actually, let's see. Yeah. If if stout as hell means anything, let's see. The thickest blade I have on the table right now, I think, is the Strider here. I'm guessing that's five millimeters. I think you're right, Dave. Let's see. I think you're right. Wow. Dave. That's a Strider right there. Yeah. Right, MF. That would be a good investment, Bob. Investment, yes. Yes. Investment in in the in the future of my family. In metals. <laughs> in metals. Yeah, this is cool. All right, this is an excellent, excellent knife. I will only open it one more time, and I will see if you can do the. Yeah, you can close it without you know close it one handed without cutting yourself. So great knife, Jim. Let's what 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 you say? We bring out the old wheel, the wheel of destiny, or the wheel of pain, like in Conan the Barbarian. So I've been listening to a great podcast uh, uh, by Dan Carlin, Hardcore History, and it's uh, the Wrath of the Cons, and it's a it's a five um, episode, ten hour series about Genghis Khan uh, and, and and others. And man, Ooh, I'm I'm fascinated by that stuff. Whoa, shit! You should listen to that. It's it's unreal. It's he's really awesome cool. too. Yeah, Dan Carlin. Oh, Dan Carlin. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, he's awesome, but he also killed like, you know, 80 million people. <laughs> I don't think Dan Carlin <laughs> killed Dan Carlin. <laughs> All right. So let's count down in three, two, one. I'm not sure if that's how it works. Jim, can you think? Round and round she goes. <laughs> Spin the wheel. It's going. Ooh. Oh. Caleb, oh. Townsend. Caleb Townsend. Good on. I check you out. He, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So Caleb uh, also won the the uh, the winning bid on the Terzuola package, uh, which was the, uh, <laughs> the the knife by Drop, the book, uh, the the uh, re rehashed book, and uh, uh, the the titanium thing. So Caleb, you're a two time winner here, sir. So this. Uh, SR1 light is on its way to you tomorrow, and I already have your address. I think it's probably around here somewhere. Congratulations, that's really awesome. Now, let me just tell you what this giveaway was for. Uh, Caleb is one of seven uh, patrons over at Patreon who who are uh, super generous and uh, are gentlemen junkies. That's the ten dollar a month level, and uh, I'm really uh, flattered and um, honored and. Uh, uh, a re I will redouble my efforts, you know, with with people giving money like this. Uh, so I want to give back a little bit. And uh, so here it goes. Every month, a giveaway, a knife giveaway on the third Thursday uh, at, on Thursday Night Knives right here. That's cool. uh, yeah. So the first one was a cold steel, you know, kind of a knife whisperer. How there you doing? he is. I've he lives. Hey, boy. <laughs> I, yeah, my camera settings are all messed up. Uh well, I want to thank you in person for this. This is really, really cool. Uh, this this is a Civivi. I don't even know what the what the model name is. What is that? Right You're right welcome, Caleb. Thank you. thank you very much. Yeah. What is this called? The, the, the Dogma. The Dogma. Oh, okay. It looks like the Shredder, uh, yeah. Bob. Yeah, it looks a bit like the Shredder, but it's way classier. And I'll tell you why. Uh, <laughs> I really I, I dig the blade shape a lot. I mean, they're both really cool clip points. But I, I like the uh, I like the clip point on this better. But the thing I really like is that it reminds me a bit of a traditional knife with a bolster and jigged bone. I love jigged bone handles, and I thought, wouldn't it be cool if we knife made a, a, an expensive version of this, an upscale version of this, with dyed jig bone, you know, like autumn jig bone and and um, nickel silver bolsters, or I guess you'd go titanium. They, they would go titanium. And uh, you know some high premium blade steel, but have the same setup. It's like a really nice size, and uh, I dig it. And of course, it's super super thin. Bearded Gear, do you do you uh, have Beautiful. you viewed any Civivis? I haven't 
personally owned any, but I've given some as gifts. And oh. I've my brother and my dad both have some. So I've played with them plenty. I just I, I need to <laughs> I need to start trying them. I feel like I always miss them right when they come out. And then they're not that exciting once everybody else already has them to me, because that's the way my brain works with knives. But yeah, yeah. I, I would say that the most uh exciting Civivi is the is the um gentlemen uh what is it called the rustic gent i've seen it, those yeah those are cool they're they they're a great mix of modern and and traditional and that's one that i could see you know i i, I am prone to the same thing that, that you just described and i think many of us probably are um and that's one that i could see sticking around it'll age well uh, yeah it, exactly yeah, see, I my only issue with that one is I generally don't like backlocks, and I know a lot of people don't like that about me, but it's you true. I just I just don't it. prefer them. <laughs> <laughs> I have one backlock that I love, and it's the fluted carbon S90V Native Five, and I just forgive wow. that it's a backlock because everything else about that knife is virtually perfect. But generally, I I like fidgeting too much to enjoy backlocks. <laughs> I know how you feel, Jake. But there are other ones I, out there I'm that are just I'm like sure that. I'll find them. Yeah, you'll find more backlocks that you'll be like, wow. For me, the Chaparral, the Spyderco Chaparral was one of those backlocks. I have one of those. <laughs> I've got a, a box oh, of Chaparral. 20 knives I'm sampling right now Yeah, from a Facebook group. The, they, they call it the Cut Club. And there's a Chaparral in there. It was my first time holding one. I was blown away how slim Cameron, the whole profile is. Crazy. Is you it me or does Joe life? look like he's about to commit a crime in a hotel room? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Locale. We. So, Joe, Joe, how you doing? Joe Frazier. The like back rock of the bearings. Uh, all good? All oh, good? Oh, I'm, I'm super. Excellent. Excellent. All good. I thought I saw little arms all like good. flinging up above his head, like. <laughs> or was it feet? I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, those those are big arms. Oh, I, so, I, got uh, I right thought now. it was your victim behind you somewhere. <laughs> Dave has. Uh, oh, they're on the floor. <laughs> Dave has a pack of Reich knives that we're going to get to in a, in a little while. Are any of you guys familiar with Reich? Yeah, I've only I, reviewed I have, one. And well, I have the one that. Right, so. It's the one that that on. uh, Joe sent me. I'll, I'll grab it. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Um, so, uh, bearded gear, let, let, me, let, me, let me ask you this. Uh, mm -hmm. Give me an overall picture of your taste. Uh, I like big, dumb, tactical. What do you like? That's a really, really hard question. I, I tried to do a video saying what my preferences are in knives, and even that video got kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. I generally... I these days prefer knives that are probably between... 3.25 inch blade to 3.75 being kind of the maximum of what I'll really carry as like an EDC blade. But I also am, I, I'm outdoors enough. I do a ton of hiking. Um, so I, I also sometimes prefer like overbuilt stuff specifically for that facet of life. But for EDC knives, I, I generally like a good amount of fidget factor. I always say holes are better than studs and people seem to get a kick out of that. So I've got it <laughs> even on stickers now. Um, <laughs> And uh, I like that. Yeah, so I like <laughs> fidget factor. I like deploying with a hole because I can middle finger flick it. Um, my probably favorite lock realistically is like the compression lock because I can fidget with it and it's solid and I like the dexterity of it. Um, but I mean, I there's my taste land all over the board when it really gets down to it. If you look at my collection, there's all titanium frame locks. There's micarta kind of outdoorsy knives. There's G10 and there's carbon fiber. And there, I don't really have like a, this is my knife, you know? Right. 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 So, so, uh, yeah, it, it is good because it's good to keep your mind open and then you get to experience things like the Reichs, these two gentlemen on the, on the, on the opposite corners have been showing, flashing uh uh wait what is that this is so, uh reich 1902 1902 are those inlays that's, cool. that's the one i yeah. reviewed bob okay okay god that's beautiful and and what is that dave this is oh. the m2 that's the but one that looks here so you open the cool. blade on that that's an integral holy nope. smokes whoa oh that's intense man. 
That thing is that looks a locker amazing. Or something? <laughs> it's cool. for work, officer. What do you do? I'm an astronaut. <laughs> 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 I'm a Klingon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's really cool. That is beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome. is, that, is that a four point two five? This is the one with five. This is five millimeter stock. Jeez, oh Pete. Okay. Oh, is that a? So that's a Reich. Yeah. That's a Reich M M two. Wow. God, that's gorgeous. Uh, Slacy said he has a Tule. Is that what it's called? Is that the integral uh, G ten model? Yes. Yep. Uh, Look at that. Oh, that just sounded. I mean, even over this audio, that sounded awesome. That's beautiful. Let me see the back. Hold it, uh, hold it up to the right up to the camera. Let me see the back, please. So those are G10 inlays. In an integral G10 knife, huh? God, yeah. That is very cool. Didn't I didn't even know that was a, a thing. That's a that's the first time I've ever seen it. But the Tule has a great sound. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah. So yeah, milled out of one piece of G10. Um, you know, we know this stuff is strong. Uh, I think, uh, and not that I'm being a fanboy, but I think Cold Steel first proved that when they started taking liners out, you know, liners out of their knives. It, it is strong stuff. You don't need a liner uh, unless you're doing something that you probably should be using a fixed blade for anyway. You know what I mean? So uh, uh, let me see. Uh, do you guys, let's see. I'll check out Asher Knives for real great guy, great blades. I've been seeing cool. this stuff on Instagram. He's the guy. Uh, uh, he sent me, Tier 1 sent me, I think, a uh, um, a DM with that in it, I believe, with a picture. He does kind of access lock style folders from what I've seen. Okay, so no. I take Unless I'm thinking of a different person, but I'm pretty sure. Uh, so I wanted to talk for a second about, I, I, I sent a couple of you guys uh, two new releases uh, knives i want to talk about before we start talking about our favorite purchases and releases of 2020 and we go on to we're, we're having a really special knife fight tonight and i think alex uh appreciates the gravity of this one instead of doing my typical axis lock versus uh frame lock or you know this steel against that steel or whatever tonight we're doing one where one side is is might possibly be forced to argue something that they that they feel morally opposed to. Uh, do blade length laws keep citizens safer? Yes or no? And you know this is not about how you feel, but but how you debate. So it'll be it'll be interesting to to uh, <laughs> that will be that will be a hard one to debate on one side. That's for sure. <laughs> well, 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 but but all you have to do is put yeah. yourself in the mind frame of and. I, you know, it, it sounds corny to say, and I don't mean it this way, but the enemy, you know, how, how, how does the opposite or the opponent, how does the opposite side, how would they say it in the news? And then but I them. like that because it opens it up for forum. You know, people, yeah. if you put yourself on the other side for a minute, sometimes you're like, yeah, I guess I can kind of see why I still disagree, but yeah. You know, well, it, Jim, I and I had an un, Jim and I had an unplanned debate once when we were talking about those plastic knives. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> that cool steel makes and I'm I'm all for them. <laughs> but Jim brought up some, <laughs> for, Jim brought up some damn good uh you know uh, oh, yeah, arguments and I was like ah, you're right. But, but I don't think I said you're right. I think I I think I blustered off somehow but, <laughs> but I was like everyone should have the right to have a knife they can stash in the uh in the in the flower <laughs> pot outside, you know, in case they're gardening and someone jumps up on <laughs> Or in the shower, which yes, exactly. Or in the shower, shower. knife is a real thing. I yeah. have a karambit knife. I, <laughs> I have a push dagger. <laughs> yeah, it's important to have. Um, there yeah. you go. You don't want to get caught flat-footed. Let's just say that. <laughs> I feel like the odd man out because I don't have a knife in my shower. <laughs> All right. Well, you're gonna get one. But 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 I, I have it. an extra one. <laughs> There's three women in my house, so it's you know. I don't know well, how the they, knife they all bring a quiet carry in with you. Something in Vanex super clean. It'll come in there and you'll be fine. Just oh, I, carry I it got in. it. I'm going to James Bond rig it right underneath, with, like tape it one or underneath one of the sinks or something like that. Yeah. And you know what? This is a great opportunity, as, as Bearded Gear just indicated. Great opportunity, Alex, for you to seek out some super exotic materials, you know, and have a great maker like fashion you the perfect bathroom knife that can take all manner of humidity and uh yeah this is I a great opportunity it, i keep it hanging on the there's like a one of those soap things over yeah. the shower head and i hang it from there behind like a loofah that nobody uses you can't <laughs> even see it what is it what model is it 
It's it, it's a push dagger. I don't think it's yeah. it's just something some cheap thing I got at a gun show once. So yeah. I don't think it's any like you know it, it's not a brand or anything like that. But it's work. I it made works, one. You know, you, you made, made one? one. I made one. Yeah, a toothbrush and a razor blade. I call it Shanky <laughs> Spank. <laughs> Drop the I love it. Prison rules. All right. I love it. You know, it's I'm cool. telling you, he's in a hotel room right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that, the Holiday Inn. So we were just having a, a a conversation at work about you know someone mentioned that they had seen a collection of prison shanks at the at the at the local prison because uh, they were just shooting. I work in TV and they were just shooting something there. And uh, and he was telling, oh, Bob, you would have loved it. All these shanks. And, yeah, man, it's amazing. It's amazing how big it is. Like someone took a serving spoon, like a big like uh, mess hall serving spoon and sharpened it into a dagger. And it's sort of like the big long. I'm like, I should do that. I should just like, <laughs> like I've been working on this. This is a Bowie knife. I, I, I just have to get heat treated. And then I'm going to like put some handles on it and stuff like that. Dude. And wow. your edge retention ought to be. A little better than that, uh, whatever steel that spoon is made out of. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. But I was like, that might be kind of fun just to make a a shank, just to see how you would do it. Maybe you could score Bob, a I shank buy from your friend. Dude, wait, people wait. can make it out of paper mache. You don't even need like a hard object. Really? Let's do a shank yeah. challenge. Everyone's got one week. Make a shank. Let's do it. Make a shank. <laughs> no, no metal. <laughs> make sure. Yeah. Right. You have to make a shank, and then you have to hide it in your cavity oh, and make it past the guards <laughs> oh, prison God. wall. <laughs> you couldn't help yourself <laughs> say prison wall. Dave, Dave what did you say I, I heard... out of ice, Bob. huh make it what? out of ice uh oh yeah, yeah. of course yeah. make it out of ice no Damn evidence it. it melts so uh jim would you mind bringing up the new tashi knife uh, have you guys seen this the new um yeah custom knife factory Tashi Only knife. 200 pieces. Oh, oh man, that thing's hot. He's gorgeous. A, a, Tashi Barucha to me is, uh, I mean, oh, he's a cool. he's an artist. I love his work. And then, uh, you know, um, in wow. talking to him on the podcast, um, he is a real artist. He's a Frenchman. And, and I don't mean to glorify the fact that he's a Frenchman, but he lives in Paris in this really cool looking apartment. And he's you know, designing knives on the side while he like runs the marketing and in, in, in a, you know, a big, huge corporation. So, I mean, he's, he's a, he's a class act. What can I say? And his knives are cool. Look that at blade that blade shape is bananas. I really mm. like it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, um, what's his name? I am so sorry. Uh, I'm going to try real hard to have to buy one of those, but it's going to be tough because there's only 200 of them made. So they're going to like, boom, instantly sell out so ben schwartz of knife news uh says that uh that it's a recurved tanto and when you look at it it is that forward tanto portion is so long and curved and graceful and then you have just a very very slight recurve on there uh but yeah 4.2 inches i mean come on i love a four inch blade that's so that's awesome and not too many uh companies do that uh make them but you know they're they're from russia so they're they're probably all good with that. Um, but uh, have, yeah, have you seen have you seen his T series coming out? No, he's got the the T three thousand just dropped through Riot. Oh, what's that look like? Is that like the um, is that like in the baby? Maybe Jim can pull that up. Um, no, it's more. It's kind of similar to that one, but it's got more of a recurve in the blade. Mm. He does a T three thousand, a thirty five, and then a four. You know the number stands for the blade length, right? Um, the three just dropped. The maybe Jim can pull that up. It's yeah, actually, T three thousand. Well, actually, before uh, Jim, put the picture back up if you would of the of the one of the one that's just coming out. I want to. I want you guys to check out the lock bar insert here. It's got like a dovetail, a little tiny dovetail construction. I think that's what you call it, or puzzle piece construction. I don't know if you can see this in this. Oh image. yeah, how it notches in there. Yeah. That is so, yeah. damn, that is so, that's such a nice touch. I can't What's get over a little bit is, of harpoon on the top of the blade. It looks, it just, yeah, it's awesome. It's I mean, the blade cool. is yeah. absolutely yeah. beautiful, but I mean, what's really amazing is there's as much effort in that handle as there is in the blade for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different textures and things going on 
and you know i mean i'm not 100 percent sure but by looking at it oh yeah it says right here integral so you know it's 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 gonna be a really really cool piece to have um it's beautiful it's so do you, comfortable do you, do you yeah. think all of those uh do you think those um bits of texture on the handle are milled out. Milled, milled in there or are they are they uh i think yeah. the foremost one looks like oh, yeah. an inlay and the back two look like they're milled to me well and they're yeah. pro they're probably somehow it's probably a multi-piece construction it has to be so then they're either pressed or screwed in like through the liners kind of like when they did the fifth 20 recently when i took that apart the bolsters and everything were actually screwed from the inside with uh some flat domed uh, head screws, which was kind of cool. So they do this really cool multi-construction thing, which they may very well do with one of those inlays, at least the center one. Ryan says, looks like Tashi's son of Sam model. Tashi is also the largest private collector of Tom Mayo's work to my knowledge. Oh my God. I mean, he's been posting his, uh, he's been posting his collection uh, during the co during this pandemic. He's been showing a lot of his fixed blades and he's got, <laughs> he's got some incredible fixed blades and he's got one by one of my favorite makers war dog i don't know if you guys know him he's a french guy who makes these incredible big gnarly but but beautifully constructed and polished and uh bowies oh man uh dirk says looks similar to muscle texturing to muscle texturing that was just milled out of titanium scales so to me that is amazing you have this one piece of titanium that that creates the whole body so the whole thing is milled out of one piece and then you're also milling two different like uh sizes of knurling and texturing in there and you have this amazing uh chamfering and yeah beautiful knife and and this is the closest i'm, I'm ever going to get to it so <laughs> uh, i will file this over here oh uh let me let me just do a little inter interlude. Ooh, what is that? I think they're like 750 bucks. I'll wait for Alex that's to get his and then I'll hold it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the strategy. <laughs> yep. There's oh, the I, I know now that Jake and I hang out like in person, he's got exclusive rights to all my collection now. It's the best way to do it. <laughs> California. We got, yeah. we got our California boys. I love it. All right. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, okay. As a little interlude, because I do want to talk about this Kaiser fan design thing, because one of our viewers, uh, excuse me, uh, is uh, helping me design a knife, and he reached uh, out to me. He's helping me take a design and put it into CAD. And uh, he reached out to me and um, said, I would like to help you. He heard me doing the story about the Kaiser fan design project. And he reached out to me and said, I'd like to help you design yours. And I said, I don't want to design that, but I'd love your help designing a knife. And uh, I, I hope, I don't think he'll mind. Uh, Cameron Kyle is his name. He already commented. So sorry, Cameron. <laughs> and uh, he's helping me design this. And uh, so cool. So cool. Great guy. But before we get to talking about that, I just want to show you how sharp. Okay, Edwin. I know you're out there. Edwin, this is a, well, this is a super CQC 15 that was sent to me uh, by an awesome listener who, whose only stipulation was pay it forward, give a knife to someone else. And I am happily going to do that. And uh, I'm just sort of laboring <laughs> over which one that will be. Or maybe not so happily. Okay, my brother knows it. Oh, 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 David's waving. Okay. Dave, I don't think you're a man in, uh, well, maybe, you know, we'll see. But I just want to show you how damn sharp this is. And I am not a paper. I, I do a lot of cut tests for myself, but I never show this. But watch this. I mean, uh, wow. does, that, does that mean? Oh, anything? my God. I mean, it's OK. So the reason is it's the same stock thickness that they put on their minis. And it's like twice as broad. So you've wow. got to really and then it's a chisel well it's not a chisel grind it's a v-ground blade with a chisel edge so it's just it's it's in, insanely sharp and i'm so excited about that uh because sometimes they don't come to you like that like my uh my sax was pretty sharp but i sent it to jared and he he made it actually sharp by the way uh jared neve is an incredible sharpener does it all by hand uh of neve's knives and he uses stones, and he's got a little system, and he zens out, and he did an amazing job. And so was I just—he was on your podcast just yep. a couple of weeks ago, right? 
Yep. Uh, oh no, that's Mike Emler. But he's also oh, an amazing okay. carpenter. So I just sent my Spidey Chef to Mike Emler to turn it into a respectable blade. Hey Brian, how you doing? Oh hey, you put me on. I didn't hey. see it. My oh. <laughs> yeah, dozed off there. Yeah, you know, Rona. Rona. Oh, sneak it up on you, man. It's so bearded gear that it is actually me talking. <laughs> Look, you you are alive. I now believe you. Yeah, yeah. It was uh, temperatures going up, so probably gonna be another crappy night, but we'll see. Yeah. How you feeling? Oh man. Yeah, this is, this is one of those things. You have good hours, like you don't have good days. Like a few hours, you're fine. Then it's hell again for another few hours, and then you find again, and it's just it's just up and down. It's really weird, man. But I can breathe, so I'm not complaining too much. Yeah, man. That's a that's a, that's not something everyone can say. So yeah, um, my lungs are great. So it's all that yeah, bike guess, riding. Yeah, I guess the years of racing bikes paid off. So the so same Brian, genetics that allowed me to do that at a high level also protect me from this so that's good i i almost did something very unsafe the other day which was kind of slam on my brakes to take a picture to send to you but i saw a a, a guy on a, re a recumbent bike he was a young man and i know you said that uh it's it's not big uh, among among young people and yeah. It was cool. And he was just, you know, he got up to a stoplight and he was chilling all cool. Like he was on a um, recliner and, <laughs> and just, you know, was drinking and, and then he moved on and it, I was like, that's cool. I haven't seen one in a while. And uh, you know, maybe they're making a comeback. So. Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Yeah. Like, but when I go to rallies, I'm still one of the youngest people there. Oh. So, you know, it's still a lot of older. And we know you're a man of a certain age, such as myself, actually. Yeah, <laughs> you're, a babe in, you're a babe in arms compared to me, sir. <laughs> I'm 45. I'm not that young. No, I know. I know. I'm just. But, uh, yeah, well, I, I got this today. I got the Jumbo. Oh, my Ooh. God. So that made me feel a bit better. I can't believe I haven't slashed my bed yet. Oh, my God. So I'm filling with it all day. I'm one drop away from having to buy new sheets. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. But, that... Yeah, it's, it's big. I never had the Yojimbo, so. Oh, no? I can't really compare it, but. I can yeah, send you one cool. to compare if you'd like. I have two. I have, I have two. Got, I've got one yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> you dual wield them. Right <laughs> hand, left hand pocket clips. Oh. Just... oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> With your big leather bracer thing on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, uh, what was Lavender Pants' comment, if if you don't mind? There are people in my neighborhood that ride recumbent bites and they take them to the park and everything. See? That's awesome. <laughs> They're great, but um, yeah, I just oh. I mean, I <laughs> dual wheel. I got those same grip. That's one of the few I would actually get in the coated blade, just because it looks badass. Yeah, when you yeah, held that up, like this one's a loner. This one's mine, and I got the loner, and I was like, oh, I need to get one with a black blade because <laughs> it's so much cooler yeah. looking. I have the yeah, one. I don't, I don't have it down yeah, here. It's up in my office, but I got a. Uh, Protect TR3 operator. Oh, uh, love those. All black, no logos with just the, with the fish on scale. You, you got the it's, fish scale. The fish scale one, yeah. Oh, I man. Wanted I that SNG so operator. That looked so cool. Yeah. Uh, you should play with the Uo Jumbo in the kitchen. I hear the floor help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's exactly right. And actually, that's me how, how I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And ask For me you how. at night, it does have a very dainty tip on it. It does have it. Oh, a and, dainty and, tip. Yeah, it goes down to nothing. But. Keep it hey, off Jim. the kitchen floor. Oh, uh, yeah, exactly, Dave. That <laughs> I, I have. I've, a, never, I've never dropped a knife. I don't know what anyone's ever talking about. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, I've never did such a stupid, stupid, stupid thing. <laughs> and, and obviously, bearded gear hasn't either because of how he's. Uh, that that flipping was pretty outrageous. Walking yeah, since I was a kid, off. to be honest, it's been years and years since I've dropped one. But but when you said you mentioned drum, oh really? Years and years. God, yeah, man, I am just a. I don't know. Maybe I just. Maybe I just take it out and play with it more. The Kaiser fan design <laughs> day winner pocket tool. Uh, <laughs> look at that. That's pretty cool, man. I'm gonna get you right in the nipple one of these days. <laughs> it's a little little love tap. <laughs> so is it is it lame to practice with a practice knife? I won't judge you. 
That's cool. I'm, gonna you, I'm just going to tell you, yes, it is. Okay. <laughs> All right, thanks. See, my brother. As he's... long as you don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get the butter knife out of the kitchen drawer and get to work. <laughs> so, Jim, can you bring up the Kaiser Fan Design Day winner pocket tool? This thing is cool. So they came out with this design uh, uh, contest for, for Kaiser fans, and they're going to design a product and if it's chosen, it will get put into production, and they will get a free one, and uh, um, and you know, mad street cred, if you will. It's a good deal yeah. for Kaiser. <laughs> yeah, it's a great deal for Kaiser. But you know, I said that same thing, kind of with a sneer. And Jim, who is who, who always writes the ship, said, "Yeah, but that's a great opportunity for an up up and coming designer." And I was yeah. like, you know what? You're right. I'm just being like, oh. Yeah, well, they get there. But look at this thing. Now, this is a really uh, unique thing because they were not expecting uh, with the stipulations that they laid out. It had to be three inches long overall and uh, two inches wide overall. They were not expecting uh, knives. They were expecting, um, you know, pocket tools, little pry bar thingies and uh, bottle cap lifter kind of things. But uh, this this designer out of California, Mr. J, he goes by Mr. J came up with this beautiful little solution and i hate the use of the word solution in the last 10 years but it is a solution because <laughs> it's a tiny little it's uh, a journey bob it's a journey <laughs> we went through a design journey and came up with this solution <laughs> and it's smart and <laughs> and well yeah yeah well th i think most yeah okay so uh, this is a dog tag style knife it's tiny and he's designing it for um the office for travel. He wanted to make it New York City and and uh, EU and California friendly. And uh, man, look at this thing! It's great. It's a it's a it's a cool little. I mean, to me, I would have to file it so it had a stabby point. But I know that's not the point. The point it it, it has a beautiful little utility blade with a with a tiny, I don't know, kind of round little belly to it. Uh, but but with the angle of a kiridashi. And then it folds up and it's totally inoffensive. And I think they have yet to fashion a sort of locking situation. Not that it's necessarily going to lock, but, you know, like a, like a slip joint is held open through tension. They're going to figure out something with the designer to, cut, to make it, uh, you know, a, a complete thing. But I think this is a pretty cool design. Designed by committee. Uh, uh, designed by one person. I can't say I'm a fan. Designed by one person, you know, wouldn't be my wouldn't be my right right pocket carry, but I it does have a toy like quality, so maybe the kids will get into it. <laughs> Wait, what quality? Yeah. A toy like quality. It looks like something that you know, like a Japanese, like toys that you, Japanese, Japanese, Japanese kids yeah. would carry. If you, know? you painted it like Thomas the Train Engine, then you'd market <laughs> yeah. it to children. Well, it also kind of looks a little bit like. <laughs> hey, Alex. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. We'll we'll see you in a second. To me, it also looks a bit like um, eye knife, you know, something uh, Apple might design, like make a really like inoffensive office knife. And that's what they would come up with. Uh, I think it's a I think it's a really cool thing. I was I was expecting to see a pry bar and I just man, I, I just don't like those. Uh, <laughs> Professor EDC <laughs> says that oh, you're old, Brian, 45. We're barely getting ooh, to the best seasons of our lives. That is true. That is true. Yep. It's all better after 40. Eight. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> yeah. uh, so uh, let me ask the, the, the gents who joined uh, later. Uh, Slicey, what were you, uh, what was your main knife today? Oh, the Yojumbo. Just I'm sitting around. The Yojumbo. And that's the one that showed up. And I've also got, it's been sitting here since I got sick because I haven't bothered to switch it out. I've got the uh, XM18. Oh, that's no so flipper. Hey, uh, if, if you would, can you just tell uh, my brother, because I think you will find this extra interesting, uh, the significance of the handle scale. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, a viewer um, gave me this, and uh, this is the deal. Oh, yeah. The Warthog like, one. Oh, that and is so cool. Unbeknownst to him, I was actually in the Flying Tigers. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was a command and control for the, for the Flying Tigers um, back when they were at Pope Air Force Base. Oh, cool. So, uh I've what is since it? gotten a carbon version of this scale for another knife, and um, I have a uh, um, Swiss Army yeah. knife with their pattern on it and stuff. DLT is a big fan of that Warhawk thing, so I love A10s. I think they're awesome. 
Oh yeah, yeah, they were cool. They never broke, and they never made me write reports. So I. That's <laughs> good. People. Yeah. I have I I got a a shell from the cannon at an air show once, uh, probably ten years ago. That that yeah. that an A ten and the pilots were selling the shells, and I'm like, oh hell yeah! <laughs> For 10 hey, bucks, right. you know? What's up, everybody? Good to nice. see you, sir. Hey, Happy right. Thursday night knives. Why, thank you. Happy Thursday night knives to you, sir. Thanks. Uh, let let's hey, just. Ryan. Let's just do a quick pocket check with everybody now, because now I've lost check track, and and we're gonna start with me because I'm so excited. Oh shit, where'd it go? Oh, <laughs> blast. A great start. Blast. All right, today I had my Spartan Harzy, and I don't know where it is now. Um, I can show one for you if you want to. Thank you. Show yeah. people a little. <laughs> we're so excited yeah. now. It's gone. So imagine this, oh, um, man. but. Uh, but seventy five dollars less. <laughs> I mean, I, so wow. mine is a is a plain Jane um, with the silver handle and the and the silver blade. You know, the the regular. Uh, this is a loaner. Uh, I didn't pay for it. So it's <laughs> yeah. What do you, what do you think of it? Um, I'm in the midst of trying to review it. I actually okay. spoke with Curtis over there. He's one of the co-owners of the yeah. company. And today I had like a half hour phone conversation with him. Um, I've been carrying it just about every day. I'm taking it camping with me this week. So I'll finish up my review in a few days, but so far I, I really like it. Um, it's, it's been fun to, I've never owned a Harsey designed knife before, and I wasn't super familiar with his work, although I'd seen it peripherally for a long time. So it's been fun to have <laughs> something from a legend like him and, and now kind of be experiencing it. And so far it's uh, performance wise, it's fantastic. It's a beast of a knife. Yeah. Someone, someone told me in my unboxing video, I can't remember who commented, but they said it's like a Sabenza and an XM 18 kind of had a baby. And that's <laughs> I like it I way more than a Sabenza. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went cheap. I went cheap too, Bob. Don't feel bad. When I got mine, I just got the black DLC. I asked nicely for that, and they gave it to me. But. Those are gorgeous. Yeah, but they the, are. The, and the, the blade is plain, which isn't something they offer on the site. But what people don't know about Spartan is they're all hand assembled. So if you, if you call them up and they have the parts, they'll just do it. So. They super super good people there in the shop too. The lady who answered I, I the phone was fantastic. The co-owner yeah. Curtis is I, an awesome dude. It's great. I call Percy is such a prolific designer. Yeah. You know? Um, it's I've always been fascinated with the SHF, but he's done such great work in general in the market. Oh yeah, and and with with uh, a lot of different a lot of different brands. A lot of people aren't aware he's you know been with a lot. Matt, good to see you, sir. He did the Impinda with CRK. Yeah, he also he also did the uh, you know the Yarborough with CRK, the knife that they give to Green Berets or that they used to give to Green Berets, yeah. and uh, and and several others. The Pacific, oh man, I mean his design style, gorgeous. I love it. Bearded Gear, I know what you were carrying, Dave. What were you carrying today? Oh, let's see. Oh, what do we have here? That's a front flipper. Uh, Tucson. Barracuda 139, and it's a front flipper. Oh, I like that. That's a warning. Shape, that blade shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. I love aggressive worn oh, clips. That is cool. Yeah, that is cool. Disc on the top as well. I'm a thumb disc fan. I know a lot of people, it's a polarizing feature, but I love them. <laughs> Uh, hey, uh, someone just said uh, I thought Bob was talking, but it was Vic. And you know what? That's that's like my dad too. Same thing. You can't tell the difference. Yeah. Hey, Vic, what were you carrying today? Um, I have my uh, my um, any man my, who would uh, carry less is less than a man. <laughs> my Chris with the sna with the yeah. snaggle tooth, which I love. That. <laughs> snaggle tooth. Yeah. So, Why is yeah, it so small though? Sweet. That's a tiny little knife. <laughs> 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 That's a that's a tele, teleworking knife if ever I've seen one, huh? Yeah, <laughs> but it, but it must have been cold outside. <laughs> I you know I'm I'm working from home now and I've got it, like within arm's reach I've got a whole kind of array of blades available to me. But this is what was in my pocket. So sweet, sweet. Uh, Joe, what did you have? I got the O eight fifty CF. That's a Rexford Sinkovich 
collaboration Sweet. with the team. Yeah. Yep. I like the um I like the kind of gun cylinder motif on that knife. Oh, it, look, yeah. it looks better in this black version, you know. It kind of makes it a little more subtle. It's not as like in your face, you know. Yeah, that's beautiful, man. The, yeah, four ounces for a almost four inch blade. It's crazy. Nice, Ryan. Ryan, do you uh, have? <laughs> so, you... this is what I had on me today. Ah, that's the knife. I love that knife. So this is uh, Matt Christensen. Misfit is the name of the model uh, that he just custom built for me. Um, it has zirconium underlays underneath both sides. Oh, wow. Uh, zirconium collars and zirconium thumb studs. It's got a acid oh. acid wash hand rub that he does. It's really, really cool. It has a blade finish. That blade and shit. That zirconium floating, zirconium geared backspacer. God. And a zirk clip as well. That is. Uh, that you is want me to babysit it for you, Ryan? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Uh, it's it's if, you, if you ever looking for a sitter. <laughs> <laughs> uses the Skiff rocket glide bearings from Skiff made knives in here, and uh, and they run great. I mean. The thing is ground incredibly thin behind the edge. This it has a beautiful, a beautiful thin hollow uh, done to it, and uh, this little thumb notch on here or finger notch is is, a, is actually a really useful place, you know, for part of your grip. But uh, easy access to lock bar as tit so titanium line, liner lock, and you can see that Zerk floating backspacer. But he actually came over and hand delivered this to me at my house. Oh, I saw that, your Instagram post that about that. That was awesome. Yeah. Super, super, super nice guy. But we drank a little whiskey and some beer. I grilled him out some, some uh, good food on the grill and we just hung out and, uh, you know, swapped stories and Hey, Lindy Lou. And he brought me the misfit. So that's what I was carrying today. That, uh, that blade. Can you just, uh, go wide Jim and show that blade again, Ryan, to me, this this is evocative of like a dinosaur and some sort of predatory bird. And oh yeah, the claw, like of the claws. Uh, well, I, yeah, I mean, uh, something about it. It's just totally gorgeous to me. The Velociraptor claw. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of, but oh, also hey, beautiful. Like the, beak, the beak of a hey. of a thing. The beak of a something. I don't know. The I beak just, of a thing. A beak. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love that, man. It is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. He absolutely did an unbelievable oh. job. I mean, it was, he and I were talking about the build and, and uh, it just, it turned out fabulous. So Alex, tell me what you were carrying today. And then, and then we're going to, we're going to start asking about some of these favorite knives. I, I know I've had, let's see. Let's, yes. The rat. Rat two, baby. It's an R two D two. See, oh, beautiful. He is yes. a multi-dimensional man. It's not just fancy knives. He just loves knives. Yeah. There, there's yeah. there's more to Alex than just a pretty face. Over forever. <laughs> <laughs> I love this thing, guys. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, like you know, like I'm not bougie with enough with this or what. Is that no. a Russian custom R two D two? I haven't seen that. <laughs> hey, don't be coy with us, man. It's it's, it's back. Usually you're not carrying fiber, guys. Come oh, on, take it back. And D two. That's I have a beautiful pink one. That's Westinghouse, my Carta. <laughs> yes. Um, I was just going to show one more custom, and then I'm going to hop off, hop off so I can take the family walk, our nightly walk here. So one more Grail, and I'm offline. Let's see. <gasps> Ooh, is that a Kendrick? What? This is uh, that was close. Um, so this guy taught Kendrick. This is uh, David Mosier. Oh, Mosier, yeah. Oh my God. Um, so you know he started making knives in '96. Um, you know it does everything by hand. Um, you name it. But he, you know, is known for his tactical folders, tactical designs. Yeah. This is a CPM 154 blade that he does a beautiful finish on. Zerk studs, Zerk. Uh, pivot zirconium clip on here and then uh black canvas micarta is the other the show side this model is called the steadfast he's only made two or three of these so far um so this is his newest model 
but uh, he hooked it up, and, and this thing is fabulous. Wow. That was cool. Bob is such a smooth tucker. I'm not sure what I said, but I can't disagree. <laughs> Here, this is my, <laughs> this is my uh, <laughs> RTV. I'll pizza. buy you a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this is mine. Uh, uh, what I was going to say about the the Mosier knife is that it looks like a it looks like a bit of war kit to me. I mean, it looks like not right. something that would be issued to you naturally, but it just looks like something. Um, I don't know, man. It just looks like I, I love it. I don't know what to say. It is beast mode, but I'll tell you what's crazy about it. More than almost any knife I own, I would say more than any knife I own, it feels like a handshake in your hand. Mm. It, it's the most perfectly ergonomic handshake of a knife I've ever felt. Um, and and you wouldn't think so because you kind of got designated, you know, mm. ramping and stuff here. But the way your fingers align, your two fingers in this side, your one finger here, and you can choke, I mean, any way you grip this, reverse grip, it's it's the same way. Because you got this, these two fingers, kind of in that larger one. Your pinky goes in here, and you got this nice little flat spot for your thumb. Oh, it's just incredibly thought out. It's incredibly thought out in every grip. So, well, I think those two knives that you showed tonight, shown that you have shown tonight, are like in the same. There's your smooth talking therapeutic edge. You said that. Now I'm like stumbling <laughs> on my words. <laughs> <laughs> um, the two knives you showed off tonight are really kind of in the same shelf to me. They're tactical, beautiful tactical, and they look like they're ready for business. Um, I like that. I like it a lot. You're me both, brother. Uh, well, thanks for stopping in, Ryan. See you, everybody. Happy Thursday night. All right, man. Happy Thursday See night. Everybody. Bye. See ya. All right. So, uh, Bearded. Yes, sir. Some of your favorite 2020 knives. Now, these could be knives bought in 2020 or knives released in 2020. All right. Should I? How many is my limit? <laughs> uh, you know, let, let's that top three. Let's see top three and then we'll do a round robin. OK, so top three 2020 knives. Should I start with my favorite or is that out of line to do? I think that's out of line, sir. I think okay. start I'm going to not start with my favorite then. <laughs> One of the ones that I like the most is surprisingly the new Benchmade Mini Freak mm. in carbon fiber and S90V. This knife, I carry a secondary every day when I leave the house. And as a secondary, either back pocket or even kind of in waistband, I sometimes carry it. Super comfortable, really light. And I, I'm a sucker for carbon and S90V. Um, another one. This one is is right up there for being <laughs> my favorite, but the Quiet Carry Waypoint. I don't know if this came out in 2020 or if that's just when I got it. Either way, it is unbelievable for me. I really, really like that knife. And so, what what about that knife? It's it's gotten a lot of really good press. What about that knife? Do you find compelling? Yeah. So, first of all, the profile, the size of it, it's really similar in size to like the Benchmade bug out, which to me is just about as comfortable as it gets to carry. It's a little over three inches of blade, but still under three and a half. It's a good sweet spot for me. It's really cool construction, titanium scales, but it's a liner lock. So on the lock side, there's a nested LC 200 N lock bar, wow. which is locking up a Vanix super clean blade. So the whole thing is they say corrosion resistant. I have tried to get this knife to rust, everything from slicing apples, leaving it in lemonade. Every time I'm near water, I dunk it in and put it back in my pocket just to be that guy. There's water spots on it from the last fountain that I walked by. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it literally it will not rust. It's impervious to it as far as I've found. It's a great wire clip and I love wire clips. It's just for carry and like the overall profile, super, super functional. Plus, I bought it because it was Vanix super clean. But then when it comes down to it, like as a knife, the ergos work for me great. It carries so great that even if this wasn't in such an exotic, crazy, weird steel, I'd still want the knife and it would still absolutely get carried every bit as much as it does. So it's just kind of like the icing on the cake that it's got those materials. It's your uh, it's it's just right. It's like the uh, the Goldilocks Goldilocks knife. <laughs> yeah. And so what, sir, is your favorite? My favorite, I think, has to be the new Malibu. Ooh. 
This one is the reverse Tanto. I got really lucky. I reached out to ProTech about getting one a little bit early so I could review it, and they were kind enough to do so. They actually gave me production run number one, knife number two, which is crazy. Um, so this one's the reverse Tanto, which I, I like better than the Warney on this knife. I just think it suits it a little better. And a lot of the same reasons like the waypoint, but the, the size for me is like perfect. I can carry this as a primary if I'm going light or as a secondary, if I'm going heavy, the blade is super functional in shape and grind all of it. It, it just comes together. And then a, a fidgeter like me loves a good action. Yeah. And this is just unreal to play with and I can spin it. So it's, it's good. <laughs> so what's the uh, blade length on that? Is it three and a half? <sighs> No, it's under three and a half. I, I'm terrible at specs. I think it's like 3.3-ish, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Beautiful blade shape. I love that. And 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 man, uh, button lock is is so fun. Too much especially fun. If it's, especially, yeah, right. Too much fun for the for the uh, other folks in the house who have to listen to it. Right. <laughs> yeah, my wife hates this knife. I love it. <laughs> Dave, what are your top three 2020 purchases or... Um, releases i'd say purchases bob yep is with this company you never know so this is a new acquisition oh that's cool this is tucson believe it or not i believe it look at that the the 226 nice inlays and this is a um jelly jerry design oh cool and uh it's meant it's meant to open three ways, but I can only open it with the flipper. <laughs> Are you supposed to be able to uh, spidey flick it and front flip it? Yeah, you're supposed to be able to uh, use the uh, the hole here to spidey flick it, uh, front flip it, which for me is next to impossible because I'm not getting traction on this guy. You could see how the flipper could could interrupt a, a front flip. Yeah, it, it's not coming far enough forward. I mentioned that to Jelly, and he said, oh, you just got to keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to grow your thumbs. <laughs> Effortlessly, and it's uh, drop shutting. Cool. So what's, and, what's um, number two? I, I have to you have your Eno Santo shirt on, too, I think, right? No, this is uh, Ron's shirt. This oh, Ron's shirt, traditional Filipino weapon. TF, cool. TFW. Um, the one I showed earlier is definitely a favorite. That is sweet. That's this cool. is the Reich M2. So let me just say that this looks like uh, that looks like an elegant and well designed. Um, oh, what was that company? Quartermaster. It has some little tiny like references to Quartermaster, but it's yeah. like it's I done. Mean, uh, <laughs> Quartermaster. The, the detail is amazing. Uh, okay. Rick did a great review on this one. You got to check his review. Um, but the. Uh, the blade is beautiful. Blade. It's a four inch blade, pretty much. It's got, if you, I don't know if you can see it, but the grind's a little tonto ish. Yeah. 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 Breaks away there where you got a, a forward belly. Yeah. Oh, God. That's so Dirk. Uh, Dirk is, is saying he's yeah, loving it's these. It's got a double lock here, which is interesting. It doesn't get in the way. Mm -hmm. And you it don't have to use it. The double lock. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you, Dave, but that that double lock hides itself well in that design, you know, because there's yeah. so many um, elements. You can't accidentally activate it. That and whole then, life uh, pretty robotic. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna save the the crazy one for last here. Whoa, that looks. <laughs> Are those scissors or a knife? <laughs> so, it's got a blade. This is a Reich. It's got um, button release for two other blades. Oh, it's got a gut hook. And a saw blade. Sweet. Oh. And Wow. Here's the part. But wait, there's more. <laughs> wait, what is that? It's a slingshot. What? Oh, <laughs> yes. I oh, love wow. it. This is James Bond. You know, you can you can use this with a tux, man. I love that. Wow. I have wow. a slingshot that. Uh, thing that I'm 
I'm getting into them. I think they're cool. I, I love that. How cool is that? This is that the is cool. uh, Sniper Eagle by Reich. What's it called? Sniper Eagle. Sniper Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Me likey. It all stores in Sounds like guy. a Stallone movie. <laughs> <laughs> Sniper Eagle. Hey, oh, I guess that would have been a, a Schwarzenegger <laughs> movie. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Schwarzenegger stars that, in Bob. this Stallone movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The concept is you can shoot your game, you can saw down the tree, you can skin it and cook it. That's that's <laughs> it, man. I love it. I love it. Alex, what about you? What are your what are your faves? Um, well, I did a video recently which kind of showed all of them. Um I, I forgot to bring this one out, which is the dressiest thing I've bought ever. And um, this is the JD Van Deventer um, gold full size. And it's got a, um, you can see it's got a Damascus blade on it, very tight herringbone Damascus with Westinghouse micarta and Timascus just like everywhere. So this actually should have been in that video I did today, but it yeah. wasn't. That's the dressiest That's, um, knife I've ever held. <laughs> wait can you can, i'm sorry before you move on to the next one. Oh, the rock's dead wait can you hold the the one you just had up and sure. show the pivot and and just and uh hold it for a sec oh the pivot yeah the pivot uh Let's next see. to that westinghouse micarta oh god cool. that is just beautiful yeah i love yeah, that it's that that armwell flong style Westinghouse too. That micarta so is gorgeous. Cool. So Vic, do you know about yeah, Westinghouse yeah. micarta? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So it's 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 highly valued in the in the knife world because you know there's there's a limited deposit it's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, Vic. I mean, your helmets. Some of your helmets were made. Yeah, the out. helmet liners. Yeah. In okay. World War II, were made out of micarta. Mm -hmm. mm. So let's see that rock's dead now. This this knife is. Hey, Alex. Let's go. All right, we go. Oh, uh, we go. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. You got me? Yeah. Okay, yep. cool. So, oh, so this is the uh, Rockstead Higo 2. And I've been waiting so many years to buy myself a Rockstead, but most of them don't come with a pocket clip. But you can see this one does. And um, it's got the unidirectional carbon fiber, which is something I'm really a huge fan of. It's a really expensive production knife, but um, for some reason, it's just become one of my favorites. They're known for their heat treats, how sharp they get their knives, and all that good stuff. That so incredible polish. This definitely Jesus. That's the biggest mirrored edge oh, yeah, I've ever awesome. seen, Alex. Beautiful. <laughs> it looks yeah, beautiful. it's... Uh, <laughs> they... <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's... it's... <laughs> It's a really well-made knife. Um, a lot, lot of times I've heard the debate about Rogstead being worth the money or not. Um, this is my first one, and I'm going to say totally. I totally will buy another one for sure. Not for a little while because they're not cheap, but I will probably have one more in my collection at some point. That's a stunner. And So that's a production knife, but how many um, – is that – Limited production? I mean, are they, are they just pumping those knives out? I can't imagine they are. No. Um, I have no idea how many, what the production numbers on those are. Uh, they usually release knives in runs. So, I don't know. I'm assuming maybe two to 500 is usually what it is. Wow. Um, so, yeah, that was a cool one. Beautiful one. And so, then, what about your um, third? My third, honestly, is going to be this one because this one, this is the one that Casey did for me. This is a knife that had some issues over the years, but I never got around to sending it back to him. And it's so perfect now. It's got the most amazing action and sound. It's definitely probably one of my favorites this year. So um, knife I had for a long time, but completely redone. So it's pretty much like a whole new knife. So that's from Old Dominion Knife Works right here in Virginia, uh, down uh, in yep. Richmond. And uh, I've been following him for a little while. And then when I found out that you had one, that you've had one of his knives for several years, I, I was 
found that very cool because I thought I thought I was you know I thought I discovered him. <laughs> no, and uh, he's making a really cool five inch uh, knife. I can't remember what it's I can't remember what he calls it, but oh man, it's a big big frame lock or uh, 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 it's just a big custom flipper, and it's it's kind of gnarly looking, and it's got a nice big um, tanto. Love his work. I love it. Uh, knife he's with made up to like five inch blades too. That fold. It's yeah, pretty nuts. That's the one, the Edris. What the Ooh. hell is it called? I can't remember, but so knife with. I forget what he called that model. Yeah. Th three knives this year that you, uh, <laughs> there's that smooth talking again. <laughs> uh, yeah, Jim, Sorry. ladies and gentlemen, hot on the keyboard. <laughs> what, do you, what do you got, the knife whisperer? <laughs> All right. First, I got the, um, the uh, disc in IDF. Mm. which is an integral nice so matt matt diskin design made by riot um this is actually almost a three and a half inch blade and it's i think it's just under seven inches long the blade to handle uh ratio is ridiculous on these things yeah alex you had yeah yeah, I, that's one of the the main highlights I said on my review of it is the blade to handle ratio is pretty impressive in that. Um, it was light that. too. What, it is light, yeah. And it and it has that own unique sound, you know, because it's uh it's an integral. They ring different, yeah, you know, when you deploy them. Yeah, it's definitely that was this is a fun one. Eugene yeah. Kwan sold me on this knife when I saw his review on it. And um, nobody really knows about this. I mean, if you go online, like, there's like three videos of it. You know, yeah. I think they're Who almost gone now. Who makes that? Um, Riot makes it. Riot makes it. Okay. Oh, yeah. They know a thing or two about making a knife. Yeah. So what? What else do you got? Do. I got. Next is that thing had a thin blade too. That... It is thin. Yeah, the Starboy. Tashi design. Top. Yep. Now, um, this knife here, all of Toshi's designs too, like the, the way his handles are done, just the ergos are amazing on this. And um, just the uh, the firing on this knife is ridiculous. Like this thing, like watch, ready? You won't even see it come out. It's just there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, thing's, uh, this thing's a lot of fun. This is probably my favorite fidget knife. They won't see you. fidget knife. That's man, that's beauty. I love that blade. Now you see me, it now is. you don't, Ricky Bobby. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I put that in my uh review. <laughs> it's the bird, it's the plane. No, it's the star boy. <laughs> so, and, so what's, um, what's your shake and bake? My favorite is actually a knife that came out a long time ago. The oh, 601. Yes. That's a beaut. I love the, the tip, man. Uh, yeah. Alex? <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> That's, That's what she what said. She said. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> <sighs> I, I love it when that happens. That really is the knife that what? started the whole thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> it is. So that's what I that's what I love about this knife. When this this is the knife that actually gave um the Chinese knife some respect, you know. When this came out and everybody got them in hand, they're just they you can't deny the build quality. You know, this is an original design. They weren't ripping off anybody. And um this knife sparked like pretty much the takeover that's going on now. I mean, as much as I wish it was the American knives, it's really isn't, you know. You just can't compete. We can't compete with these things. And I don't know. This knife just deserves all the respect. That's it's actually multi-row bearings. So. I love uh, how they I keep I kind of agree with you. That's that's the whole reason I bought it, really. Go ahead, Alex. I, th I, I actually think that's a good point that you know joe made i bought this off spirited whiskey which we just had on recently um this is that kickstart kickstop um made by riot the wingman edc mm -hmm. 
this is incredible. I can't even believe yeah. the quality of how good this thing is. And it's funny if, if you cannot misfire this thing. Like, you know, some knives you could partially like flip. Like this yep. thing to do that is like, it's, it's so difficult. Like if you really want to flip it, like there's no way you'll miss flip it. Just, it's very snappy. Yep. So yep. with all that and a little ball bearing for the flipper and everything else, that's mechanical. Like Riot's been very impressive. Uh, oh, amazing. Definitely. So Vito, yep. do, you have, do you have a top three? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think. I think number three is the Emerson. I don't. It's upstairs. I oh, the, the Super CQC seven. Yeah, that you that, want. That thing is cool. Um, it it requires a decent amount of like um work to get it smooth. You know what I'm saying? So I'm still in, yeah. I'm still breaking it in. Uh, number two, which is actually a, a surprise to me, is this ah uh, the Lightning the one, OTF. Yeah, I, <laughs> you know. Bob got this for me a couple years ago and I gave it back to him because at the time they were illegal here in Ohio. So he took it and he sharpened the hell out of it and sent it back now that it's no longer legal. And I was like, Oh yeah. Okay. Whatever. But I, I have it here at my desk. And again, I'm, I'm working from home and every time I get on, on a phone call, I'm just, you know, we don't obviously use cameras, but I'll just be sitting here like listening to people talk and I'm doing this. And I'm waiting for somebody to say, what's yeah. that noise? <laughs> yeah. This sounds like the Knife Junkie podcast. What's that? <laughs> and, and then I'm like, uh, turn your camera on for a second. That. <laughs> it's a leaky roof. Um, There's a bad drip behind me. Yeah, exactly. You'll notice it's irregular. <laughs> yeah. what, what's some, sometimes, one? sometimes this one I'll play with, but this, is, this doesn't qualify because I got it last year. Oh, yeah. But I think number one is what i showed you before because at the end of the day i too am a large cold steel folder junkie and yeah. i love them and um not only that but i'm also a chris junkie i love chris's and so you're here brother the the opportunity yeah. to have such a large chris in my pocket that's what she said is you know is something that like yes I, you know i just love it it's just a beautiful night it's you know Vic, where and are you in Ohio? Lavender pants. And when could we say, ah, Lavender Pants is an Ohio boy. Uh, ah, uh, just, cool. just last year, just last year, uh, um, Knife Rights went to Ohio, and Ohio was never the same. So, yeah, <laughs> you can carry them now. Can so, Knife yeah. Rights come to California next? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Alex, that Wingman EDC Mayo MDD-K is absolutely outstanding. From hand rub to action to detent and grind. Superb. Yeah. It, it looks cool, too. And Tom Mayo. God. Matthew. Hopping out. Matthew, it's been a pleasure, sir. I thank you. Uh, stay sharp. Thank you. Will do. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my three, and then we're going to move on to this debate. I'm excited to see what's going to happen here. I have every Voyager, says Chad. Chad, I Sweet. wish I, I, there was a time I could have said that, and then I, I went through a guilty phase, and I gave... A number of them away and now i'm like Psh, can't go out and get them again but uh so anyway my my favorite purchases of 2020 have been uh let's see in in this order uh well this is a this is a 2020 release and it's the uh slip joint by lion steel uh called the and i'm i always do this gitano the gitano like the 80s designer jeans uh this one has uh <laughs> This one has a uh, wood handle. What is that? Be I can't remember, but a, a nice blonde wood handle. I think it's cool. This was a this was a knife offered in my carta that I didn't take in my carta, which is way uh, playing against you know my my type, I guess. Um, but I just love the look of that blonde wood. So wood suits that one. It does. I Did agree. You say What's that? Did you say blonde? Blonde. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know if one walked by. <laughs> yeah yeah right, <laughs> right right there um but it's it looks like a traditional navaja one of my favorite all-time favorite knives uh, knife designs out there just a mini version of it so love this knife it's got great action too though i'm always suspicious it snaps back so hard i'm like ah it's gonna wrap it's gonna hit somewhere so i, I close it gently and deny myself the walk and talk uh 
I would say number two is a purchase. Uh, this is also not a 2020 release, but this is one I bought this year, and I got it from, uh, well, from Alex. And he gave me a screaming deal on it, and it is such a beautiful, and you know, I love Emerson. Uh, it's the Iron Dragon, uh, a knife he, uh, Ernest Emerson, designed in honor of uh, his Jeet Kune Do teacher, uh, Richard Bustillo, and I'm a big fan of him also. So this knife is a very... I don't know. It's not only probably the sweetest looking recurve Bowie in the in the uh, in the Emerson lineup, but it's got meaning. It's a meaningful thing. And then it's got this sweet titanium frame lock. But damn, is it thin? It is so thin. And, you know, it's got action you don't expect from a from an Emerson. I love this knife. That Thank is you, a Alex. Sweet knife. That's yeah. so cool. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. I want it. Back. I, I actually own two of those. The first one got stolen out of my car, and I was so sad. Oh. And then I found that one brand new in the box. I'm like, I have to have it. In someone and then, else's car? Huh? Did you find in it someone, in else's someone else's car? car? Unfortunately <laughs> not. Yeah, I, got, I, I had to pay premium for it. But um, now I'm searching another one. I'm going to find another one. So, <laughs> hey, hey, you want to buy an Iron Dragon? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that's never going like now now i have and that's significant to me also because i got it from you alex well, uh, absolutely and, and uh like knife whisperer sent me this i'll never get rid of this or women carry knives sent me this i'll never get rid of this I, gift knives you you just don't get rid of and so this if i had my spartan harzy it would have probably been in the place of of this but i do love this my number one i would have to say is something that i've been looking for for a long long time and i got it this year uh which is a um, Les George VECP VSEP. Oh, yeah. And uh, in the configuration, I love. And it came with a beautiful uh, blade, a uh, beautiful edge. I bought this from a gentleman in Singapore. And uh, he said, it, I didn't realize. I probably, honestly, probably would not have bought it uh, if I had realized he was in Singapore because I would have been like, ah, it's never going to make it here and all this. And I would have been all squirrely about it, but only after impulsively buying it. Cause it was a price I, that I was, that I could get with. Uh, then I read the fine print and I was like, oh shit, he's in Singapore. Uh, <laughs> I hope this works. And uh, actually he's like, did you give him, did you give him the right address, Bob? I did. Uh, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's been another problem. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Then the, then the mailman's like scared of Bob because Bob's running after him like a madman. You have a package. He probably has a knife in his hand because he's in his backyard trimming something. Here he's with the crate, the Chris in the hand. Hey, come back! Yeah, yeah. I've been Chris waiting on that. Said. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> so the guy, the guy said, "Oh, it'll take 12 days," and and I was like, "Okay." And 12 days came and went, and then. I saw, and then I got an email from Singapore Air or Singapore DHL or whatever it was. It was like a, a Singapore company. And they're like, your, uh, your knife has left our country. And then 12 days later, like clockwork, it arrived. So what, a, what an amazing knife this is. I love this. And in a lot of ways, it started a sort of the mid-tech cr craze. I don't know if that's really the right term, but it started the mid-tech trend. I think Les George was one of the first with this knife to be doing that. Um, I have been gifted a watch, though I guess that works. Yeah, yeah, you got to keep that. You got to keep that. So I just want to point something out that is just reeks of class. Jim, can you put me wide? Now, look at the chamfering around the lock bar cutout. Oh, yeah. That's just straight class. The one thing I'm not crazy about is I kind of just wish he he denied those fools their oh, whole god <laughs> i'm just kidding i don't like i don't I, I, you know i'm not I'll, a tip down guy i'm tipped down on 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 the knives i have to be that i care about the the military and the and exactly that's it that's the one no 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 uh, uh the so micro socom so calm. yeah that's hey, the only hey other guys my daughter wants to say hi well let's say hi come here I don't. Oh, <laughs> never mind. Sorry. Have a good night. <laughs> Have a good night, darling. <laughs> That's cute. All right. So uh, let's get on to this knife fight. Uh, I, I feel like it's got to be Bearded Gear and uh, the Knife Whisperer because they were our first two uh, 
guests uh, who, who were who were billed for this show. Are you are you down for this? Oh sure. wait, wait wait wait, Alex. Alex has something we got to see. No 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 no. Move on. Okay. Night fight. Okay, because I want to see that at some point. <laughs> right after. Yeah, we'll, that we'll do it after the night. Fight. Like Bob. Yeah, that's right. And then when I grow the beard, and I become a great that's, beard. Yeah, it's even worse. <laughs> My niece once thought I was him. So there you go. <laughs> and, and I said, yes, <laughs> he'll be paying for your school, child. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the knife fight is uh, between bearded gear and the knife whisperer. And here is the topic. Do blade length laws keep citizens safer? Yes or no? And now remember, this is not about how you actually really feel about it. It's just about taking a side uh, that you and, and arguing it and uh, and imagining what the other side of the of the uh, well, you know how to debate. So this is a debate Wh uh, Vic and Alex. I think maybe you guys should decide who gets what. What do you think, Alex? You you know you know these guys, and uh, it's such a one sided. I'm, I'm gonna I mean, give such an I'll, obvious. Oh, I would easily. I'm gonna argue. give the bearded gear the. Let's give the bearded gear that uh, the that it, the yes. It yeah, that it makes it makes people safer. Yes, of okay. course yes. it does. That'll be easy. <laughs> <laughs> Never invited back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so careful. <laughs> argue it, but make, don't argue it well. So what we're gonna do is uh, uh, make make our governor proud. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna we're gonna flip this penny. Heads goes to bearded gear. Heads, it is. That means I go first. Yes, sir. All right, so. What are my parameters? Do I just go? Do I just explain yeah, why yeah, no, no, no. people think Yeah, it? And, and you do it in a minute and a half because okay. these could go, you know, these are hot button issues. 90 are... seconds is plenty of time to explain how knives <laughs> being shorter makes them safer. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Great. So five All right. seconds is good. All right. And three, two, one. So the inherent philosophy behind shorter knives being safer is that there is less edge to do damage to human body. If you look at the anatomical reality that is the human body, having a short blade, it is less capable of penetrating vital organs. So if we reduce the number of large blades that are in circulation and we make them illegal to even carry, therefore deterring individuals who would be prone to carrying them from having them on them in the first place, then the natural... Of the, the natural way that that will unfold is that inherently less people can possibly be harmed by big, scary, dangerous knives. And knife attacks have been rising, not necessarily in the U.S., but globally. And if it's a trend that spreads to the U.S., then it will be safer for everybody if we have less knives that are capable of doing such severe harm by having longer, more menacing blades that increase your reach and increase the damage you're able to do to another human being. And I think we can all agree that no one deserves to be attacked by a giant knife. So if we make them illegal, we reduce the number of people who could possibly carry them, then our odds as a society of being harmed by them inherently will go down drastically. And we can really mitigate the risk of having that become an epidemic here like it has in certain European countries. Dude, that was a minute and 28 seconds. <laughs> Beautifully done. Are you running for Ooh. parliament? I mean, that sounded, <laughs> that, that sounded perfect. I'm going to be the for, mole. Did you say for parliament? Yeah. It sounded like something you'd hear in England. You know, they, they want to tell the chef's knife. Hey, there, Bob, yeah. you should not right. be influencing the judges. I should not. I'm sorry. Hilltop Gear, thank you, sir. I, I appreciate that, brother. B.O.B. I love it. Hey, what's thank up, you. BJ? BJ. I appreciate it. BJ is cool. Guys, go check out BJ's channel. He's really a uh, cool dude. Good old boy from the South. Thank you, sir. It's it's greatly appreciated. Brothers of Blades. That's kind of true here. Yeah. All right. So, Knife Whisperer, you've heard the argument. Uh, and I think, let's see, way to this. So, now I'm wondering um, what you're going to say. So, 
Let's hear it. Uh, let me let me uh, let me cue up the old bezel. All right, in three, two, one, go. My fellow knife junkians, first <laughs> off, if you're gonna make blade length laws to try to keep things safer from criminals, let me remind you of uh, something here. They're a criminal. You think making a law is gonna matter to them? They're breaking them anyway. Two. Are you going to tell me that this three inch, well, actually, this is a three and a quarter inch blade is less dangerous than this three and three quarters? No, no. If it's, if it's the puncturing of the organs you're worried about, guess what? If I don't get through the first time, I'll just go again. So my, my uh, plea to you is let's not waste our time on such needless laws. A criminal is going to be a criminal and blade length doesn't matter because at the end of the day, if the, they want to get it in there, they're going to get it in there. That's on, what she said. Girls. It's the law <laughs> of physics and nature. It is what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so let's stop wasting our time and uh, forget about the blade lengths. It doesn't matter. It's Beautiful. the size of the tool. It's how and you now, use it. <laughs> now you know the rest of the story. <laughs> if you want the reach, get that <laughs> slingshot. <laughs> oh, that slingshot was so awesome. Uh, yeah, Dave. If you're still that. watching, a hey, hey, uh, contact me on Instagram. <laughs> I want to review one. Yeah, I mean, well, I would make cool. a cool video with that. I, I take a slingshot in the woods with me whenever I go out with the girls to our local park because they end up playing in the creek and so i end up shooting rocks in the creek and it's so much fun but i want something a little more discreet than a wrist rocket gert tarkter says the main issue with knives is not so much laws but the general mindset about them in our culture yet yeah, cultures agreed people should be educated from a young age that knives are wonderful tools and not scary weapons i couldn't agree with you more so much so that i put my money where my mouth is and i gave my 10 year old daughter her first swiss army knife for her 10th birthday and uh, she's been responsible with it thus far um if it's only going to hinder that, people follow the law. Exactly. All right. So, guys, uh, let's 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 uh, figure out who won this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> actually, that was a pretty yeah. good comeback with Joe. That was. And he had props. Bearded people was like more props. professional, but yeah, I couldn't bring a knife to an argument about not having knives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Now I, I have to say, uh, bearded, bearded on your end of things, I I do think you channeled the argument quite well. You made yeah. um, you made a steel man instead of a straw man. I was know, dead I, inside as I did it, but then <laughs> I, I, could, I could tell the light kind of went out, and and then the <laughs> comments started rolling in. He actually believes what he said in all this stuff. Michael Lawson, can you just as much yeah. damage with a box cutter as you can do with a normal yeah. pocket knife? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so that's and what Joe said. They were they were armed with box cutters on 9 11. Right? And also, statistically, uh, most of the knives used in crimes in places where knives are illegal are just kitchen knives. Kitchen so people, knives. it's like you can't get yeah. rid of all knives. And so you get a ton of people with these nine inch blade chef's <laughs> knives, which I'd rather have a guy with a three and a half inch folder coming at me. I don't know about you. Then, then yeah. yeah. To be uh, well, I'm not even going to go there. That's a little too dark. But I was going to say, so I will, I guess. But to be murdered with a cheap kitchen yeah. knife, like <laughs> to be murdered at all, of course, horrible. It's not uh, classy. But, I want but, one of Alex's knives to murder me if I get to pick. Yeah. Yeah, let me see. <laughs> oh, I'm honored. Okay, go Where's ahead. this going, guys? <laughs> so, so it's going nowhere fast. But let me just say, I, 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 now on Joe's side, I like the part where he's like, if I don't get it on the first time. I'm just going <laughs> to stick it back in, you know, and I'm just gonna right. stick it in again. Uh, like, yeah, because that's the mindset. Because he's like, because, oh, <laughs> you know, there is no, di there's, you know, you if I have to stick you with this and I can't reach, you know, like, I'll be a criminal. I'll just go get one of those long ones and just reach yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Or, yeah. Oh, that's cool. I want to talk about that in a second. But yeah, if the, if the, uh, if the R two D two doesn't reach you, mm, 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 you hit it. You know that's, <laughs> yep. what they do. that's what Liam Neeson does in in you know the the, the movies with his daughter. <laughs> hey, wait, what what did you just have? A pecal? What is that? Yeah, it's a spider co. Pecal, pecal. I don't know how you say it. Cool. Is, is that on loan? 
or is no, that this it? one I just got. I uh, I got it thinking I would probably flip it, just want to check it out, but I uh -huh. kind of love it. So I think it yeah. might be a little bit permanent here for a while. It reminds me a little bit of the Elvia, you know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Ed Ed's Calderon. manifesto one. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to be, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I want to get my hands on by a custom strider. That's a <laughs> thick blade stock, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then, then you would have to do that. The big wound channel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wound channel. It's just <laughs> unpleasant term. Wound channel. You want uh, something like. I want to scare people into having small you know, knives, okay? Sleek. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what, what, what was that, Alex? So you need something small and sleek. Yeah. Yeah, that is cool, man. You know, Ryan's been showing off his Tom Mayo recently. I, I think he's. I think his stuff is so cool. And then, oh, yeah. um, and then, uh, um, uh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sometimes I'm on the spot with names. Ed Cope. He he, oh, he yeah. came up under him, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. He was trained by him. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Good Great knife makers. I Good personalities. Oh, by the way, yeah. if you guys saw, uh, if you guys haven't seen Forged in Fire watch it because good friend of the knife community the uh Schiffer. doc Schiffer, oh. uh competed on uh forge and fire did a really good job too he kicked ass when very proud of him last, last night it was on oh cool because okay our dvr stopped recording them and and so we've been missing them so we gotta yeah. we gotta catch back up my mom likes uh our, our mother and father like watching that show and uh i, I love it because when we go home to visit if if there's any time to sit down and relax, which there usually isn't, uh, or the relaxing never involves a screen, but if it does, we can watch Forged in Fire. We can all agree on that, which is cool. That Caleb is Townsend, cool. if I'm getting stabbed, I want it to be by a big bodega. Yes, um, yes, indeed. Uh, oh Gotti. Or, or got plenty of those. <laughs> Caleb, you're not going to let anyone stab you because this is going to be in your hands because you, <laughs> sir, are the winner of the Patreon Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway of July 2020. Now there's mutually assured destruction. Someone yeah. coming for you. Yeah, exactly. So, so this, oh. remember, was just me right here on on air. Lavender Pants says, "I feel like most people that get stabbed to death are reported as being stabbed 20 plus times anyway." Yowza. Jeez. And yeah, right. Right. By by guys like Joe. No, I'm just kidding, Joe. Of course. <laughs> of course I'm just kidding. All right. So I think it's about time to wrap this up. But before we do, I would like to go around the room here and just uh, kind of get some final thoughts on the evening. Things you'd like to <laughs> Jack Jack commando. Jack commando. <laughs> yeah. That's that twist microtech knife. Yeah. That... Vic, do you know what that is? It's no, it's but I'm just laughing at the at just like the, the people the, the everybody's of all like of yeah sudden, if I'm gonna get stabbed to death here's I'm what I think because I'm in yeah, control like, of this whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, before right. you do that hold on let me grab something for you <laughs> <laughs> let me let me let me just get my knife out <laughs> you may my proceed. brother would my brother would kill me if I got now, stabbed to death okay by so anybody. now. Now I got to jump in and say, if I was to get stabbed with anything, it would be that gauntlet right there. <laughs> <laughs> I want Russell Crowe to be wearing the gauntlet. Though. That is, yeah, that, yeah. That is a way to go out right there. Yeah. It, well, mind you, uh, <laughs> Vic, Vic made this for me. It's an after defense. <laughs> oh, man. This is armor. That's right. <laughs> This this is getting really good, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> my Kershaw launch four. Oh my god! Oh. Or a fin a Finch Runtley. Oh. <laughs> oh, one of those. The knife that would be an ever. I love this knife. It's really cool. And I didn't realize that this was actually Loom. They're a watch. Yeah. Company. Oh yeah. Yeah, Raven watches. This is cool. All right, guys. I want to go around the room. Card, final man. thoughts from y'all. What's that? I'd never. Live down being stabbed by an M tech. Oh my god! <laughs> oh, disgraceful. Unroyal. I prefer a cheap chicken, uh, a cheap uh, kitchen knife. <laughs> but yeah, only the blade would break off at the pivot, break. and they couldn't stab you again. So All right. I, I, I sense this being demonetized. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, Vic. That, just so you know, the Jag Commando is a triple-edged dagger. Okay, so. <laughs> It's like the sword breaker you gave me, but it twists, and each edge is uh, as, as sharp as uh, you can get, whatever that angle is. I've, yeah, I've seen the. I, I know what you're talking about. And it screws into like uh, a watertight yeah. uh, truncheon. <laughs> you can like beat people with it. Too. It's pretty cool. Jim Jim Skelton's got the best video on that thing. 
Does he really? He really does. And it's really funny, too. I, I recommend you guys watch that one. <laughs> to death by a butter knife for Alex. Oh, that's harsh. Oh, uh, butter knife. So, yeah. so, so, Alex, closing thoughts for the evening, for the week. Kevin well, Johnson. Yes, Kevin, we did. I'm sorry. Just one. Kevin, we did do the Patreon giveaway. And unfortunately, sir. Well, fortunately and unfortunately, it's going unfortunately to be for you. <laughs> yes, unfortunately <laughs> for you. But uh, your, your chances are still one in seven unless someone else uh, gets back in. So uh, August, August, actually, I need to talk to Jim about this, but I think we're going to have to move it to the fourth week in August because looks like I'm going on vacation. <sighs> That's right. Hey, yeah. Yeah, and I just told the world it's probably not happening anyway. So, uh, okay. So, uh, final thoughts, Alex. My final thoughts. Well, it was a really excellent show. Uh, I think uh, halfway through the year, you know, everybody's uh, trying to chug along, which is good. And I see people still have money. People are still buying knives. Everything's good. So um, we'll just keep trucking forward. Right? Well, I want to thank you, Alex, because uh, your video today and um, uh, several other videos, and I think Slicey, and I'm trying to remember who else, uh, but there have been a number of videos recently, my my favorites for the first part of the year. That's kind of a common theme. Uh, uh, Jimmy Slash, who was, was going to join us tonight, but he will be joining us in the future, uh, did a video on that. And I love those kind of, who doesn't like a little countdown video or a top 10 or a top whatever. So uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, that was your video was partial inspiration for this evening. So I'm glad. Thanks, man. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Knife Whisperer, uh, final thoughts on the evening, sir. Or not on the evening. Just final, final thoughts. thoughts you want to leave people with. Yeah. Oh, a confession, man. Come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> confession. <laughs> I confess I love the Knife Junkie podcast. <laughs> oh, the, um, yeah. I, I just I want to congratulate you and uh, Jim on this show that you guys have put together and just like how it's it's taken off like crazy this is awesome good awesome. work guys yeah. thank you thank you, know? you it's bringing a lot of people together it is and just the whole knife community in general just since i've started just the amount of people that have reached out to me to try to help me and like you know it's crazy you don't get that these days you know yeah Cool. Well, thank you. That I appreciate that, and I know I know that Jim appreciates that because he puts so much work into this show. It's unreal, and it's not just uh, yeah. it's not just directing and and editing the 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 podcast, but he's also a big brain. So he's always coming up with new ideas and running them by me, and I'm always kind of like, I don't know Thursday night knives. I don't I don't know. And he's like, stop. <laughs> stop being just do it oh, okay and <laughs> and now it's like the high uh, one of the highlights of my week i mean this and and, and uh, you know sunday afternoon I, I love it so uh i i i'm sure jim appreciates that too thank you sir appreciate it Vic. no problem final thoughts you got it on, oh where is the link to patreon ah spirited blades uh, actually i need it too it's uh uh oh thank you um Jim, it's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, I believe. Or you can go on Patreon and search, but I know sometimes people have a hard time doing it that way. Uh try yeah, the knife junkie couldn't find it. Patreon. You couldn't find it? Yeah, I tried. I went on on the site and I didn't see it anywhere. I I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Uh, and and also, also to people who are trying to get the podcast on Apple Podcasts and are having troubles, uh, I've heard a, a couple people say that. Uh, I we're, I'm going to be calling our people tomorrow and figuring figuring that out. Yeah. Also, I guess there's an issue with Spotify too, so that will be cured. Uh, Theknifejunkie.com/slash/patreon. Vito, okay. any any final thoughts for the evening, sir? Well, yeah, a couple. So first of all, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on. It was really a lot of fun. You're welcome. Um, and I'll echo the sentiment that i'm just i'm really proud like every time i, I listen to this podcast and i hear this is episode number 100 and blah blah, blah and i'm like oh my god he's done that many it's like it's really something <laughs> and then and then i think well it does two a week <laughs> then even that's even that's pretty pretty impressive um but i guess the thing i wanted to say is um you know, when you showed the um, when you showed the gauntlet before, I, I you know I heard a lot of nice reactions and I read a lot of the comments on the screen and I just wanted um, to thank everybody for those comments. It was nice to hear. I mean, it's you know, 
it's not something that a lot of people have seen. And so to get that feedback is, is really nice. So thanks everybody. Yeah. No longer toiling in obscurity. And, and look, <laughs> uh, he, he also, I mean like this, this was a, it is a sheath I had to make for a, a Filipino uh, knife of mine. And uh, I wanted it to be able to carry, you know, horizontal, like, like canted or horizontally and he built this whole rig. I mean, this is just a, a small portion of it because this comes with a bigger sword and, and all together, I'm ready to ride into the apocalypse. So <laughs> thank you, Vito. You do beautiful You're welcome. <laughs> you know, I actually knew that you were gonna bring out that gauntlet before it popped in the screen. Cause I remember that episode, the whole story behind that. <laughs> that was a really funny episode. That's one of those memorable ones. Uh, so was, I, was, knew, I was like, oh my God, he's gonna bring out the gauntlet. And then I saw your brother <laughs> On, I'm like, I know he's planning to bring that thing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He texted like... me about about 20 minutes before I started. He's like, I'm gonna I'm gonna show the gauntlet tonight. I'm like, oh, okay, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta see this. So, yeah, that and, is the coolest and, thing. And, uh, Thanks. Yeah, yeah. And after Dirk's giant thing, I was like, God, what? Do I do? <laughs> Nothing is as impractical as that. <laughs> yeah i mean you you know i you had me wondering i'm like wow he sounds confident when we're talking about it you know like and i'm like okay the gauntlet <laughs> <laughs> spirited blade ryan thank you so much i appreciate that that is awesome thank you thank you so that means uh that means everyone's chances for winning a knife next month have just gone down <laughs> but his went up but maybe i should yeah 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 but maybe i should wait wait yeah yeah exactly his went up and yours can go up too if you join <laughs> just kidding um which episode is the one with the gauntlet it's the one where uh vic my brother here and i uh talk about knife stories i think it was our christmas episode this year or right around christmas or new right around christmas uh episode i can't remember the episode number but check it out it's with vic demarco super entertaining that was a good one those <laughs> stories i was like i was actually mowing my lawn out front when i was doing it i had my ear pods on i'm just laughing my ass off <laughs> my, there's my, some good ones there my favorite story of mine is the grenade story because yeah. it's not a knife story it's a grenade story but I tell that to like I'm I'm 52, so I grew I grew up in the 70s, and I tell that to like the young people that I work with that my bus driver gave me a hand grenade from World War II once, <laughs> and they just they're like, what? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that, you know? I gotta ride just, the bus it, more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. I, it's, it's I don't feel safe. You know? I, I like I don't it when it I like it when you and Bob talked about. Um, you you had this really cool toy Bowie knife that Bob really 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 wanted one like <laughs> yeah that awesome. that whole thing it was really cool yeah, that was, you know Vic Vic has always been like an amazing brother and, <laughs> and, and and has done very very little you know he did very little antagonizing of me when we were young but that was one thing that he was just like no I let you do let you play with everything of mine you cannot touch <laughs> this fucking knife. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then my my mom recognizes this conflict and buys me of my own fake knife and i'm like cool thanks <laughs> but <laughs> it wasn't the same thing right it's but mine was better thing. what can i say yeah. well, you know. <laughs> so bearded gear do you do you have any final thoughts on the evening or not on the evening but on anything that you would like yeah um first of all thank you so much for having me my first time this was a lot of fun to oh. be here my uh, pleasure hopefully not your last Thank i you. hope so too yeah I, I would love to come back um i realized right after i gave my top three that i should have probably thrown out the mini freak because i didn't have this in my case it was next to me but this is the spider code danger pickle oh, as as i have named it cool. and now birch tree blades has also uh, <laughs> accepted the name of and made me a danger pickle <laughs> game bottle opener um so shout out to michael birch that's awesome of him that was but super yeah, cool the danger pickle is absolutely in my top three of favorite knives for 2020 so i, I should have mentioned that open it up hold it up close i i've i've seen it in pictures but let me that is something is that is that's it's sculpted g10 it looks like what is that is that what's the steel on that yeah, so it's uh, CPM 20 CV blade steel with a hollow grind. So it's actually really thin behind the edge. Um, 
it's ground super sharp too. It's a Taichung Taiwan Spider Co. So it's really well made. It's a titanium liner lock. Uh -huh. And it's actually, it's a kind of heavy because it's a really thick chunk of 20 CV. God. But it's just a fun, chubby, like really good ergonomic, small. It's just quirky in all the right ways while still being very functional. And it's a, it's a great knife. I, really I like, like those two totally words next to each other. Yeah, yeah, this is Fun good it. for short, short little me who who well, hates no, you, long blades. No. You said fun and chubby. <laughs> I like those two words together. <laughs> More cushion for the person. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that should have been in my top three. Girdle. Is is I think what I was going to say. Other than that, yeah, I don't know. I, I look forward to doing this again. I really do appreciate you having me on and. Awesome. I, uh, I want to reiterate that I, I do not believe the things I said in the debate. <laughs> so. we, we all know this. <laughs> Don't hold me accountable to those, those words that came out of my mouth. It, it was a debate. It was understood that someone had to take that difficult line. And actually, the other line is, is, not, so, is not so easy either. Uh, and we all know we feel that way, but it might not be easy to argue. Uh, I just saw I got an email notification. Edwin, Edwin, our resident Emerson expert and uh, good friend, just became a gentleman junkie also. So thank you, Edwin. It's greatly appreciated. And yes, you are, you are correct, sir. This is a, a beast. I'm sure you have this in all three sizes and i bet you have it custom to your collection is outstanding look at this i mean this is a this is a little bit threatening that's a knife this is yeah uh, uh, okay i'm done with the paper cut test. uh i have nothing left to say but thank you all for joining me uh it's been a real pleasure uh it was great to meet you bearded gear and and to uh, jake and to really get to know right yeah, yeah, you got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry because <laughs> I just had a little mind fart. It was really great to to get to know you, and and uh, I'm I'm digging your videos. I've just started watching them in the last two weeks, and I'm 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 starting to you know they're becoming a part of my habit. And, Appreciate that. And uh, I really like your uh, your insight. You know, I, I think you've got a good perspective, and I I like your taste too. That always helps. Thank you. Yeah, and my, my, you can hear them on the Sharp Talk podcast now. It's true. Oh, you're on the Sharp Talk podcast. I, I've been dubbed in. I'm one of the official members now. So, oh, you know, man. Give me the every, every two weeks. Nicely, nicely done, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I thought he'd be a good addition, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. He, exactly. I mean, that, you know, he, he, it's, it's always nice when you don't actually need a prop to understand what the person is saying. And, exactly. uh, yeah. In any case, Victor, thank you so much for coming in. It's it was Thanks awesome. for having me, Bob. A pleasure, always, Alex, my my oldest knife buddy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> knife Whisperer, uh, a new knife buddy. I'm digging your channel too, Vic. You got to check out Knife Whisperer uh, also because okay. you're you're gonna dig his uh, knife confession confessions. He's right. a funny, funny man, and you can see the guns a lot on his channel. What's that? Yeah, right. well, gets, he gets he flexes a lot. So if oh, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see the houses behind nuts. me disappear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for bearded gear, Vic DeMarco, Alex Tissot, and the Knife Whisperer. Uh, I'd like to say thank you all for coming. Don't forget, uh, uh, Jim is behind the scenes working, working his magic. And I also want to mention that uh, you know the Knife Whisperer sent me this awesome Civivi, but. He also sent Jim this really cool Civivi pry tool and uh, what are they called? These airplane tag things. Um, and yeah. this is really cool. Thank you again. Uh, I swear, Jim, I will get this in the mail post haste, uh, you know, or when you return to the office. <laughs> Just kidding. I'll get it in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Edwin. So uh, for all these guys and Jim working his magic behind the uh, Behind the switcher, I'd like to say I'm Bob DeMarco, the Knife Junkie, and it's been a real pleasure uh, speaking with you all. And for sure and most definitely, do not take dull for an answer.